Yeah, so let's talk about measurement. Why is it important, Christian? Why do you think it's important to measure? And what is what is what what are we measuring? What are we doing here? Well, I think uh, we measure various things. Normally what you do when you measure things in the internet, I think is mainly technically based. So, you know, whatever. You measure either how big the internet is, how fast it mm -hmm. is, what the status is at a certain time. I think we all know um, outages. You know, when something in the internet kind of breaks and suddenly your mm -hmm. YouTube video or your website is very slow. And then people are interested in why did that happen? What was it before? What was afterwards? Uh, probably to prevent it. So yeah. I think operational is uh, one of the reasons why people do internet measurements. So maybe a way to summarize that is we're trying to, you know, we all have these experiences in a vacuum using the internet. Something goes wrong. I can't get a cell signal. I can't, you know, but it's really hard to understand how are those, how can we quantify them and how can we understand them as part of you know, a systemic failure or a pattern and how can we remedy them. The goal is that everyone can measure and even beyond everyone being able to take their own measurement, am I normal, what are my parameters, um, to understand what, you know, to access the data, to access the measurements, to look at that, to add their own perspective to, you know, what does it, what does internet speed mean? What is size? Are we talking about the size of the pipes or the number of routes or, you know, how do we quantify these terms? How do we sort of, you know, how do we kind of found these concepts which are sort of slippery, you know, in language and you know, data that can be acted on? And I think the more people who are able to examine that and bring their intelligence to that examination, um, the better we'll be able to, you know, continue growing an internet that actually serves human needs. Now, there are a number of ways to measure. Um, one of the projects that I work on, you know, that I focus on and I'm really happy with is an open source effort called Measurement Lab, measurementlab.net. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you can go to that website and, you, you know, basically it looks like a speed test, right? You click a button and mm -hmm. you get some basic statistics, you know, how much data can I push to a certain point in the internet? How much can I send? Mm -hmm. How much can I receive? How slow is it? You know, how how long does it take to get there and back? Um, and some other basic statistics that are fairly well understood among you know internet users. Um, you can then go, you know, if you are somebody you know, like Christian and you you know this is what you do on your weekends passionately, you can go you know dig deeper and get a lot more arcane and technical statistics as well. Um, and what you know, so so. You know, doing the measurement, getting a quick snapshot is open to everyone with a device and a moment of time. Um, what's also cool is that the interpretation of the data, the access of the data, the comparison of your results and you know the deep technical results to other people's results is also open. We have measurement points on all continents and about 150,000 tests a day covering mm -hmm. the globe, which are you know we believe to be fairly representative. What the Rabbit Atlas project is, which is basically a project from the RIPE community mm -hmm. and executed uh, by the RIPE NCC, is uh, based on little dongles. So the idea was instead of actually having you know servers and a lot of infrastructure, mm -hmm. which uh, actually, to be honest, uh, the RIPE NCC probably couldn't afford, uh, we thought, hey, let's do it the other way. Let's do a mix between a little bit of probably crowdsourcing might be the right word and a lot of distribution. So what the NCC created was a little dongle. In the beginning it was a dongle, now it's a small box, not too big. And it has an Ethernet connector, you know, what comes out of your router at home. Mm -hmm. And um, actually USB or power, so that it is powered. And that little box uh, runs a very, very small version of a, a Linux operating system. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is given out for free. So end users which are interested, the imaginary housewife, yeah. me, you, can go to the RIPE NCC and then you get one of the little boxes. You then take the box home, mm -hmm. connect it, and uh, then the box basically goes online. And from now on it does measurements. It is a quite different approach to measurements. So it is not so much about the speed, what we are mm -hmm. measuring, but we measure actually connectivity and availability. So we are actually coming close to 10,000. So up to 10,000 people or, you know, companies somewhere in the internet have deployed these little boxes and they do the measurements against either fixed infrastructure like root name server or other infrastructure mm -hmm. in the internet or, now comes the fancy point, 
for the people who actually have one of these things deployed or for others, you can make your own test. So you choose your own website and then you uh, tell a couple of these probes at once, not all 10,000, please make a test to my web server and then you see, because they are very widely distributed, how the connectivity is, the reachability um, to your own web server. And you can repeat that and then you get even graphs and visualization how it changes over time. Well, what you could see, for example, is the connectivity um, either to a certain destination, but that's probably as a policy maker not so interesting, but you can actually see what, what the RIPE actually uh, shows. Um, also RIPE Labs, which is one of the websites from RIPE, which reports over that project, is the connectivity from example countries. So when we had examples like Syria or Egypt, when they either were partially or completely offline, you could see that these probes which were either deployed there or measurements in that country didn't work suddenly anymore. Measurements are probably as old as the internet. As soon as you know there were a couple of devices connected, people start to measure, are they still online? Do they work? What are they doing? But it was, uh, in the beginning, it was always the operator, the people who operated the network, who owned the network, and they were measuring their own part. Um, if you're an end user of that network, they don't share these data with you. Mm. Your provider doesn't tell you necessarily, you know, I had a good connectivity or I had a bad connectivity, you figure out when you have the outage, but the quality and how the current network looks like, they normally don't really share. The other part is, even if they do, you would see just a tiny fraction of the internet, just the provider you are connected to. So what happens here is we spread it to much, much more networks. So instead of seeing just a part or instead of having no data at all because the provider or the owner of the data wasn't sharing it, to a certain point we have a democratization of uh, mm -hmm. measurement data. Not just that much more people can do it, you don't need infrastructure, it doesn't, because the infrastructure is already there, it doesn't cost you money, you're not paying 10 bucks to make 1,000 measurements. Mm -hmm. But um, you still see a lot of the whole internet, how it behaves at a certain point of time. Before you had organizations with a vested stake in you know, how networks function, mm -hmm. a business model around that, um, who had access to data, but still didn't have access to this whole picture because they were still only able to measure what they could see and what they were covering. And they were not sharing it. And they were not sharing it. Um, and now we have something that is broadly shared and you know we can think about it empowering those who don't have a business stake in a, you know, running an operator or you know, a CDN or mm -hmm. what have you who are now able to take part in decision making over this technology because they also have access to this data.